I, I'm still waiting for confirmation that we're live. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to AMA number 44. Uh, it's the 10th of December, 5 p.m. UTC, and we have Mary Camacho, Executive Director. Hey, Mary. And Art Brock, Co-Founder and CTO, as well as myself, David Atkinson. All right. Uh, it, lots of rapid fire questions today. So, uh, just going to actually skip this quick quick thank yous again thank you to uh there's a there's a series of people that are really deeply involved in the community organizer world right now so thank you for all of those guys whether they're writing documentation testing rsm building apps uh the the this core group of people that's been growing over the last couple of years is absolutely phenomenal uh, thank you for the team for pushing so hard over the course of 2020 to get to where we are and with that I think Mary I'm just going to hand over to you for a quick update and then we'll go into the rapid fire questions. Finding my unmute hey everybody. Um, so I'll do a quick update and maybe invite Art to say some of the specifics about it but we'll see how it goes. Um, so first of all I've been updating a lot about the what sometimes you might hear called the infrastructure one release that's what it looks like out on our roadmap on the website or uh, you might have heard me call it the elemental chat for hosts release because what it is is it's elemental chat uh, on holoports so that only hosts can test directly on their holoport still through a web uh, a web ui or a browser sorry um, so, so that's what we're working on right now. And we are really, we're right on the cusp of delivering um, this release. We've been doing great dev testing on it and going through cycles where it's just, it's perfect. We just incorporated uh, the new networking with Holochain RSM a week and a half ago or so. And so we've just been cycling through finding some of the issues. And, and I know there's a whole section of networking later on that we'll be talking about some of these things in this AMA. So I'm not gonna go into those details right now. But the great news really is, is that um, we have seen this app just respond incredibly. Uh, it's been quick, uh, instantaneous, practically going across oceans, even just to do chats back and forth. Um, so people have asked, I think on Twitter or online, different places, um, you know, is it is it equivalent to things, um, you know, other chat apps, you know, out there? And it absolutely is. Sometimes I'd say it's even faster. It's got, uh, you know, it just, it depends. And art can go into all the ways that it can be faster or slower, depending on all the circumstances. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, <laughs> but I will say what we've been really spending some time on is the resilience needs, um, making sure that as more nodes are coming on, as some nodes go offline, that we're able to gossip all the information that's stored on these source chains and in the DHT and get them to all the new people who are coming in. Um, to the network so so that the channel all the notifications that are in the channels for the chat are getting replicated on everybody uh, everybody's UI as they as they enter um, the application so that's been some of the work and we've been finding little edge cases where things aren't working perfectly and just fixing those bugs so a um, couple things I, I will say to kind of finish up this this piece is one that it's it's we're just doing another release to dev test today. I'm actually at some point during the AMA probably gonna go offline and join that dev test and we'll see how that goes. If there's some good news, maybe I'll pop back in and, and share that with everybody. Um, but I wanted to share one other quick thing because it is December and we're heading into some holiday periods. And I just wanna like sh make sure everybody knows we're gonna release this coming release when it's ready. Um, and we're not going to just push our developers this year to work through all of the holidays and push themselves. I mean, they have family time that's important um, and things that they wanna be focused on that are sometimes outside of work, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> and so we wanna really um, encourage that they take care of themselves for that as well. So just wanna make sure that that was a clear public communication to everybody as well. So this will go out as soon as we've gotten it through the dev test and through QA, and then we're going to be working with that community testers before we take it to the big, you know, big open wide release on, on this first one to post. So that's pretty much the, the update for right now. I, there's a couple of other questions that are going to be coming up later that will tease out a few other things. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Arthur? Sorry, now I was having problems unmuting. Um, the 
just just that you know we only released networking a couple weeks ago and there like mary said there's a networking section but it's been great to be pushing this through the holo testing process because it's helped us find a couple of bugs and uh, i mean we expected to uncover some bugs networking is complex and but they've been pretty easy to fix and um uh, once we built some of the tools for tracing and uh, them down, because we didn't have all of that test harness infrastructure quite complete yet, um, it, they were, you know, not that hard to find. But we had to build some tooling to help us find them. Um, so it, it's good. Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get to more details. All right, cool. Well, let's let's move through them a little bit of a different tone. We got we got a series of questions and we'll move through them relatively quickly today and see where we get to. So first first question, Art, is will the Polyport be able to run itself in a closet with cable connection and electricity without further human intervention? Uh, yes, this is the short answer. I mean, basically that's what it's designed for. There is some initial things you have to do, like when you have to install the keys on the USB drive, put that in the whole port and set up some initial preferences. But I mean, basically what this is designed to do is run unsupervised. Um, tech can get moody sometimes. So an occasional reboot could, could end, end up being required if something weird happens or power glitches, like you, you have a power outage and, and that kind of thing. Um, and obviously if there's a hardware fail failure at some point, then it's gonna need attention. But um, generally speaking, that's, what they're supposed to do. Dust bunnies in the fan could be a problem too. Exactly. When, when you stick these things in the closet, if it gets too too dusty and that kind of thing, you might have to clean it up. <laughs> cool. All right. Mary, any updates for trademarks, licenses, certificates that we have? Yeah, sure. Um, well, you know, we've been pushing a variety of trademarks for Holo, Holo Fuel, and Holo Ports around the world in all the different jurisdictions. Um, pushing means we've been applying for them and receiving them, um, <laughs> in case that sounded strange. They're, um, these are really intended to, to help us, you know, in case people are out there pitching our services, using our name in some fraudulent way, and that, that gives us the, the ability to, to kind of show, no, this is really not uh, the person sh who should be using this, this name. Um, we've also successfully ushered the cryptographic autonomy uh, license through the open source initiative uh, in the past year. I think somebody said that this ha hasn't seen an update on this since 2019. So, I mean, all of those things have been happening over the course of the last year, year and a half. Um, and, and the open source, I'm sorry, the Cal license is really gonna be used for all the whole chain applications. And that's to ensure that end users can maintain their full agency and control of their private keys legally. Cool, super, thank you. And uh, does the Nano work with any external hard drive with power hard? In, in general, yeah, it should be compatible with any USB hard drive. Um, but if you're like recycling one that you have, it's possible you might have to reformat it if it was like previously, I don't know, formatted for a Mac file system or something like that. You might, you, you know, you might have to um, reformat it. A couple of things to note, the Nano's USB port speeds are actually USB 2, not USB 3. So you don't have to buy the biggest, fastest. It doesn't do any good to have an, an SSD drive in terms of speed come on the on this USB port. And another option, if you don't, if you have an older, if you have a, if you have a spare hard drive that isn't self-powered, you can actually get a powered USB hub and plug it into that. So in other words, the bottom line is that the Nano's the hardware already receives very little power. So you just don't want to drain it by plugging in other devices that have to be powered by the Nano. So you can handle that with a hub or an externally powered drive. Cool, thank you. Okay, next one. So knowing how big companies like AWS or Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud are in terms of the amount of storage they host, do you see Holo as a true competitor knowing that it will be hollow ports and desktop computers providing the bulk of the storage. So I'll jump in with this one. So as I think as demand for the <clears throat> hollow hosting network grows, it wouldn't be surprising for us to see another class of hosting emerge. So we've been thinking about this classes, uh, these classes as peer hosting and pro hosting types. So at the moment we're focused on making peer hosting the stable backbone for hollow, but 
when you start to have the industrial style scale applications like an Instagram or a SoundCloud come on board and they want to run on, they're, they're not going to be able to run necessarily on purely the peer hosting infrastructure. They're likely going to need a high powered servers on faster backbones. At that point, we expect to see some hosts specializing in this kind of mass storage. Uh, just, just one quick note, when we're ready to allow the pro hosting type to come on board, there'll probably be a requirement for them to provide some portion of their hosting power to run proxy services for peer hosts who are not easily reachable behind NATs or firewalls. Hopefully that's useful. So next one, uh, will Holo be able to host websites that rely on large amounts of storage? Uh, for example, do you ever see a point where a company like Netflix could use Holo to host their services knowing the huge amounts of data storage they require? Um, not 100% sure about, about Netflix. They have very specialized, you know, um, streaming needs, on-demand streaming needs with really high volumes of usage. You know, if we scale that back just a little to YouTube, which is also high demand streaming or something like that, but not, not well, whatever. Um, obviously, David just answered some of it above. Like we do expect as more kind of industrial scale applications come on that there would be needs for specialized server things, but um, specialized storage um, servers and that kind of stuff. But I think there's even an opportunity for other things. Like for example, the GPUs used in mining rigs, you know, if you're retiring a mining rig, you, we, we intend to be able to make plugins for the Holochain conductor that might be able to access specialized hardware like GPUs so that we could even let the whole hosting infrastructure get used for things like, you know, rendering farms for graphics or other things that you might need highly parallel GPU computing for. Um, but th this is all down the evolutionary path. Like right now we're just focused on holo ports and pure hosts. Cool, thank you. So if my version, question coming in, if my version of the app carries its own chain, say on a mobile device, what are some measurement or some measures to prevent my own chain from becoming overly cumbersome for my device's memory? So a lot of people, they, they, they hear the chain and holo chain and they think of it like blockchain as in a global state. There are chains in holo chain there. We call them source chains. Everybody has their own source chain. So your own source chain is just a record of your actions. So your chain only grows when you take action. So if you think of it like a Twitter app or something like that, or a chat app, it's just the chats you've typed or the chats or the tweets you've made. And those are going to tend to grow pretty slowly compared to you know, the kinds of multimedia type of content that people put on their phones right now, like photos, music, videos, right? That stuff grows very quickly. So um, I think the, store, the phone storage for a chain, even if you're running a full node, like when we get a, a light client that runs on, um, on nodes and maybe even can, be, can store DHT stuff, even if you were running full version of Twitter at like Twitter's current scales of 330 million active users, the way the sharding works that you're even the chain, the um, DHT content, the shared content you have would grow pretty slowly because you nobody has to hold it all. So um, generally like we, we use an example using those stats that basically turns out to be over the course of a year, you'd have the equivalent of one 12 megapixel photo in a year's worth of hosting a, a Twitter node on your phone built on Holochain. Like the, so um, I'm not very worried about that unless what you're talking about is rich media. And in the case of rich media, you'd probably wanna split the app into two apps that talk to each other. One for like users or uploaders or, or users or downloaders that who may upload stuff and another for the hosts that serve out the big assets because nobody wants to serve that kind of stuff from their phones anyway. So you'd want to split that into two different apps. Cool, thanks Art. And Mary, when's the Holoport Nano shipping? I have to get this unmute thing fixed. Um, so we've just finished updating the new Nano image. Um, and this, what, what this is, is it's updated to use the 
new whole port operating system with the Nix upgrade that we announced a little while back. So we're doing a few rounds of testing on that, dev testing with the folks that have nanos on our team right now before we send the image back to the manufacturer and have them run a test of that image on the nanos again. Um, and then we'll, as soon as we get past those two series of tests, we'll have the, the manufacturers run a full run and start looking at our options for shipping them out. Cool. Okay. And then, so someone who has a hollow port that they haven't started in a long time, when and how can I update it with the new version? Right. So we, we were going to just release that out and let everybody update to uh, update their hollow ports in advance of elemental chat, but we found that there might be some things that were still uh, adjusting with that upgrade that it's just easier to do it once because the upgrade is going to require everybody if you've already registered in the past to reset your holo port and re and go back through that registration process we didn't want anybody to have to do that more than once in this go around and so we're just holding off and we're going to do the release for the upgrade on the holo port at the same time as the release of elemental chat for hosts now, the thing I said about the reset, I just want to say one quick thing, is that we expect that you may need to do that more than once over the coming um, weeks, months of releases that as we get from here and to beta. And that's because as we, as we make these changes, we're going to want people to start fresh sometimes. And that's what that reset allows you to do. We did this intentionally. We built the technology intentionally so that even folks without monitors and keyboards uh, can reset their holoports quite easily. Super, thank you. Okay, so this one, I'm not an, I, I am not an app developer, but an ordinary user of multiple internet services. How can I already now and in the future use Holochain Network or is this only for professionals? So coming at this from the perspective of apps, this person might be able to use. Right now, there aren't a lot of mature apps built on the new version of Holochain. Uh, and anything built on the old versions is moving over for increased performance and security. So for example, hum earth, hum dot earth, I think their, their website using an older version of Holochain is still online while they're working towards a release with the new version. There are some apps that need early adopters and testers that might fit, fit your needs and some are testing UX on mobile like Junto and Cheaper and others are testing their Holochain app features like Acorn, Snapmail, Recursive Kanban. Um, and finally, we've, we've just released the new version of Holochain and networking has only been launched for the last 10 days, I think Mary was mentioning earlier. So hopefully we'll see a lot more apps play with to play with coming soon. And especially as we move to open alpha, as we used to call it, and, and then into beta, we'll see a ton more apps come online and see how it easy it is to build apps. And, and for people who don't want to build and just want to use these kind of apps, hopefully there'll be a lot for you to use. All right, next one. So is there a plan what to do if there's not enough hollow ports for hosting? You think the market re will react to that by adding more hollow ports to offer more hosting power, or maybe hosting will be more expensive to reduce the demand? What can the hollow team do in that case? And then they're hoping that there'll be higher demand than supply, which would be a sweet worry. Yeah, that, that would be fun if the demand increases so quickly that the supply of like cheap consumer grade devices can't keep up with it. But um, I suspect that there's going to be, you know, since, since we don't require, uh, um, you know, GPUs and all that kind of stuff, the expensive mining rigs, um, we, we suspect that the supply of the hosting devices will keep up, but we kind of have to be prepared for that event eventuality since we're, we're hosting, um, we're selling hosting services. And so we have to be able to spin up a series of cloud hosted infrastructure if we needed to sort of an on demand kind of thing. But that's kind of a worst case scenario. That's not really what we want to focus on. What we're focused on is providing the peer based hosting on the edge. Um, you know, because frankly, we'd, we'd rather build community and have our hosts get paid than to have to have us pay Amazon or Azure out of hosting funds. And uh, you know, if the demand rises that quickly, then I think you'd, you'd see a lot of people mobilize um, even spare hardware and stuff because the, the whole port operating system can actually run uh, on other hardware. You don't have to run it on a whole port. Um, so, 
even though our initial focus is really getting Holoports up and running, I imagine that that Holo will be powered by more than Holoports as, as it evolves. And how long after beta release do we expect software for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS will be ready, uh, which could really increase the hosting offer? Well, similarly, we're, I don't think, well, actually, let me first say Holochain uh, will be making releases for all of those platforms. We, we do intend to have Holochain apps, have end users run Holochain apps on any platform. However, I'm not sure we'll ever release Holo hosting targeted to different platforms. Um, I think the only thing that allows us to kind of orchestrate the hosts in, in synchrony and make sure they're on the same versions of things and everything is the is way we've set this up on the Nix operating system, which is uh, able to do self updates so that we can get everybody in sync on the, uh, on the versions of the tools that they're running because we can't have hosts be incompatible with other hosts. Um, so, uh, the Nix OS, OS is a Linux variant, and I think you'll always just have to be running Holo hosting on Nix OS unless you want to just try building out your own host instance. And we uh, would not encourage that. I would strongly discourage that. Um, however, technically, you can install Nix OS in a virtual machine image. In fact, we did a lot of our initial testing on virtual machine images, and you can run a virtual machine image in Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. So technically, you can boot up a, 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 a an HPOS, a Holoport operating system image, on any platform already. Um, you just have to run it in a virtual machine. And um, but right now, that's kind of a DIY thing. We're really focused on having support materials and documentation for people with Holoports, and you know maybe maybe some more kind of mutual support in the open source community might emerge for DIY hardware approaches. All right. So Mary, is the HoloFuel app developing at the same time as Elemental Chat or is it put on hold until Elemental Chat is finished? So it has been being developed in parallel uh, for basically as soon as RSM, uh, Holochain RSM could be built on we started making some work, doing some work on the migration for Holofuel towards towards that. Um, it's a lot more complex of an app com as compared to something like Elemental Chat. So Elemental Chat is also a lot more fun and has a good practical user experience. And so um, it really showcases how fast and how responsive distributed apps can be. And so that's a lot why we wanted to release that first. Um, what you're going to see is that various aspects of Holofuel are first going to be released inside of the host console and then later in the publisher portal because what we're doing is we're ensuring that Holofuel is working on the Holo platform to support the invoices and the payments between hosts and publishers. So that's going to be some of the first parts of Holofuel that, that you see released this next path way through. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, so I've got a, a few ecosystem questions. I'm going to just do a little bit of rapid fire with myself here. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. So the, the first question, and, and yeah, Mary's gonna disappear for a dev test and let's see if she comes back or not. Uh, so first question is just any update on partnerships? So for some of you guys across Telegram and Twitter, you all would have seen Kazuna is a chat app that will be built on Holochain. They're doing a crowdfund at the moment. We've got an AMA on the Holo and Kazuna Telegram channels tomorrow. Uh, so that, that's quite exciting. We've got a lot of engagement going on with the distributed, various distributed web communities and building some great relationships there. There's some really, really, really cool projects out there. Uh, that, that our team are engaging with and building just a shared understanding of the the various landscape and challenges people people are facing and then the opportunities out there, which is which is phenomenal. Uh, our main focus, as we've said for a couple of years, is getting to getting to open alpha, getting to beta, and building. So right now, it's building communities, various communities, with those who are deeply aligned with the Holochain ethos and. If you watch some of the ecosystem sessions, you'll notice that there are points in time where people talk about thinking about distributed 
computing, thinking about agent-centric systems, uh, thinking about ways of doing legal contracts or regenerative food systems. And they have a certain moment where they say, well, to do this, I need something. And that something is Holochain. So we're focused on for, for the people right now for whom this matters. This, this is their life mission. And we're focusing on spending our time and supporting those people. And as they do really, really cool things that you couldn't do with technology beforehand, others will come on board. And all the partnerships that you're looking for, if you're asking this question, will com come down the line. But without building something that matters for someone who identified Holochain as the thing they've been searching for for the last 10, 20 years, then, then I think like for, for us, that's the foundation of the communities where we're, we're, we're really focused on right now. Uh, okay, so the next one is taking building on that. Why don't you make agreements with corporate partners and games and I think Holochain has this skill and Sure, that that's it's absolutely true, and I, I, inevitably that that will come, whether it's us partnering or whether it's organisations seeing the opportunities in some of this technology and applying it. But right now, from this lens we're taking, these guys all have a blockchain paradigm in their heads, and so from our perspective, we've talked to a few, talked to a lot of people, and it's way better to show them something working. Uh, this is going to happen in the future. But for right now, talking about Holochain versus blockchain, when they've got a whole series of you know blockchain R&D initiatives and all sorts of things, when you tell them what Holochain can do, they can see it's a potential game changer, but they need to see something working. So how many partners are using Holochain and cloud do we expect? And is Mozilla still in the game? So quick one, Mozilla, they cut back on their distributed web priorities, but the opportunity is still there. Uh, it's really nascent until Holochain is ready to run in browser, which you talked about last year. So there's no doubt when we're ready, there'll be more to hear about there. But I would expect, expect us to see two things. So there's a market for distributed hosting services. So I'd see, expect to see that market emerge in 2021 as we get to beta, as well as I would expect to see us as hollow organization find ways of solving problems that current cloud can't and start to build solutions in in niches that that takes share from current cloud and i would expect a lot of haps to be built in 2021 just looking at how easy it is to be building haps on rsm this is a nice one i love these kind of edgy questions so your community has gone to shit. do you care it's, and I, I think I answer this one in, in Telegram every a few times a week, maybe, but I, so I assume this person's referring to some of the Telegram communities or maybe maybe Twitter community. Um, and firstly, I, I don't think things have gone to shit. There's all sorts of different type of discourse that's, you know, some unproductive, some productive. That's not really us, us to judge, but there's a lot of energy in, around the project. Some people are frustrated. Some people are still excited. Uh, some people have a long-term view, some people have a short-term view, but mainly for this one, I say like community exists in many forms. So we aren't just a telegram group with meetups, but we've got people whose, whose lives, people whose purpose, people who um, dip in and out across a, across a whole ecosystem. So for this one, everything I'd say is uh, just get involved, get involved in any way you want to or can. Uh, and experience experience one of the many communities that are forming around the project. So and I would just, I would just jump in, on. jumping on the, on the heels of that. Yeah. Like if you're getting your experience from, um, from, Twi from a telegram or, or from a community of speculators who are basically ha happy when the price is up and sad when it's down and then it's down. So it looks like it, the community has gone to shit or whatever. Right. So there are a lot of other places to get involved, like, like David's saying, and there's like really great, uh, developer communities, some really great local communities. There's get involved in our forums and, and that kind of stuff. The, there's a lot of healthy community in places in our ecosystem. Exactly. And we made a conscious decision to not focus all our energy on building healthy community in, in Telegram just because the ways of relating and communicating are e it's easy to move divisive quickly. So it's not that we have no energy there. It's just that we've put a lot of energy in other places. Uh, so, okay, so I know you are actively working with Redgrid. Are there more projects that are like Redgrid that are interesting for Holochain? 
And a great place to look is the ecosystem sessions. So Red Grid was on a couple of months ago. Uh, I'll be chatting to them again next week. Uh, but a lot of those foundational projects we're talking to regularly, profiling regularly, you can check out the Holochain Forum. People are sharing projects there and get involved from, from the Holochain Forum, chat to the community organizers and get a sense of some of the other fantastic projects are being built. And then Art, I want to hand over to you because I know that uh, in, in, in your world, there's all sorts of currency, regenerative economy projects going on. So maybe you can share some of those. Yeah, so in the way that like Red Grid is building toward an, an internet of energy and essentially moving toward being able to have an energy backed currency and that kind of thing, we have other projects in the works there because um, at least I am, am a little hot right now on getting uh, asset backed currencies that are connected to real human needs. So energy is certainly one of them. I would say actually hosting is another. We don't think of it as a real human need, but if you realize that we all carry these little comp computers around in our hand and hosting is code for, like a code word for communication and collaboration on all scales, like enabling communication and collaboration on all scales, it turns out that's kind of a human need. We have to be in communication with each other. Um, transportation, housing, food. So we have a transportation project that is, um, has, has targeted Holochain and has built a, a light app for mobile and is looking at Holochain as a back end for that. We have um, a food project. We have a number of food projects actually involved, but one in particular that is um, moving toward building a, a food backed currency, Jules, just one organics. Uh, we, I don't, I don't wouldn't call any of the housing projects solid yet, but um, certainly those are sort of, they're not other energy grid projects, but they're sort of a, an equivalent concept of you know, in the way that, a, that energy credits are gonna be very value stable, like cr credits backed by food, by, by housing, by transportation, by hosting, we view this as kind of a little bit the future of cryptocurrencies don't just have to be speculative tokens, right? They can actually be rooted in reliable value in an ecosystem. And um, that's some of the things we're building on Holochain. Awesome. The partnerships we're building. Yeah, I'm looking forward to answering this question in six months time and 12 months time. It's gonna be really fun. Okay, and so what are your plans for marketing and attracting new developers to Holochain ecosystem? I think that's that's come through. I'm not sure, the, again, the person who answered this question, we've had a series of developer camps that have been community run and organized. So I'm not sure if, if, you've, if you've seen them. And I think that the, the dev camp before last had a, up in north of a couple of hundred developers registered and about 40 or 50 made their way through the whole dev camp completely community organized and underneath it all we have taken an active strategy across across our uh, ecosystem group to not push too hard this year because our primary focus is on building something that changes some people's lives for the better and get them excited uh, telling stories about what's what's possible and have developers come from that orientation of like, this is what's possible. These are the, these are the kind of problems I can solve in the world. And we know that by offering uh, great scaffolding, uh, having a core group, as well as having a technology that, that allows you to do something new that, that is richly beneficial, then we're going to attract a huge developer community. And uh, I think there's, uh, you're, you're very passionate about the scaffolding and developer tooling and accessibility. So anything you want to add there? Yeah, um, that one of the things about attracting developers is actually being able to broaden the developers who feel comfortable developing on Holochain. And, um, you know, these, these stats are a year old, but, you know, a year ago, 72% of programmers identified as knowing JavaScript and only 2% of programmers identified as knowing Rust. And at the moment, you know, you're building Rust to build a Holochain app where if we can open that up to more like that 72% of developers who, you know, know how to build web apps, then we're in a different position. And so um, we've been working on, on dev tools to really help you generate a lot of the, um, the Holochain code that you need for the DNA and even generate its connections to a UI. And then you get in a more, uh, a more kind of familiar 
territory for developers. And so, yeah, we're trying to open this up to a, a much broader audience with some of these, these tools, making it more accessible. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, hopefully you guys like the rapid fire ecosystem questions going on to networking. As I've been saying, networking, peer to peer networking is working, which is We've been phenomenally exciting. So Art, a few questions, actually anything you want to say overall to introduce networking or do you want to just jump into these questions? Uh, yeah, I just want to be a little careful when we say peer-to-peer -peer networking is working. Technically that's true, although the default configuration we're using at the moment is routing traffic through a proxy server um, because Networking is also, of a distributed app is also very hard to debug. And so right now, being able to have a central place for tracking and tracing the messages lets us debug things while we're in this early release stage. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes. Cool. Okay. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. So is your Holotain's uh, distributed hash table implementation a variant of the long established Kademlia DHT? Yeah, short answer is no. Kademlia is not really designed for sharding or for self-balancing gossip, like where the network is healing itself. It's typically actually used with a, a tracking layer or a resource directory overlay um, so that you can find out what hashes are located at what nodes and Holochain actually directs the data based on hash to the nodes that are near the hash. And um, so we have implemented our own approach and there's some more questions about that later. So I'm not gonna say that much about it, but RRDHT is our own approach that is designed to have, a, to have similar performance, uh, potentially even faster performance. We'll see how this, this pans out. Um, with some benchmarking, but um, most importantly, very simple world model representation, model of where data lives on the network because we have to keep gossiping it and having it be a self-healing network. And that's very hard to do in Kademlia's binary tree uh, structure because trees don't really divide up easy, easily into zones. So the, the nearness algorithm of Kademlia actually makes it trickier to, to identify what like a neighborhood of your neighbors might be shaped like. And so anyway, no, we're not using it. <laughs> <Kedemlia. laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Art. So what are the expected barriers to implementing sharding in RSM? And do you have a sense of if, when it will happen? Um, yeah, we've actually, since sharding was already designed into our, our DHTs, our, our architecture and all that kind of stuff, um, really, most of the groundwork is in place um, as we built it. Um, so we do, I don't expect any major barriers to functionality. It, it will certainly make testing more complex because it gets harder to determine when you've reached consistency, when nobody's holding all the data. So right now, again, for testing purposes, it's been very helpful to not have sharding turned on because then we can run very simple tests of we can say, okay, you know, 180 things have been published. Does everybody have 180 things? You know, yep, okay, we've reached consistency. Um, and so it, it, it simplifies the, the modeling problem just for some of these early testing. Um, and we're gonna have to build a little bit more complex test harnesses and stuff to have this work when sharding goes on. But I don't expect any, any barriers, um, certainly compared to having just launched networking and having the, the layers of complexity in doing that um, are just not in play when it comes to how we've structured the DHT. Cool, okay, a final one. Will all Holochain connections have to run through proxy servers or just the ones behind a firewall? Uh, we can bridge this question with, and could a hat be created where each agent offers to function as a proxy for others, a fully distributed proxy server network, so to speak? Yeah, so you don't actually have to create a HAP right now to have agents function as a proxy for others um, because uh, each Holochain node actually comes with the proxy software already. So it's already designed for any node to function as a proxy. Um, and so in answer to the first question, will everybody have to run through proxy servers or just the ones behind firewalls? Already, 
if it works, if you have a public IP import, you can expose that and do gossip and everything already. So you already don't have to go through a proxy. Um, you can just change the setting in the config file. We're using the proxy so we can debug, as I already said, and we can load test and see how much volume the proxy code can handle under real world usage situations. But also, um, it, it can be hard to detect your network state like what the topology of your network is, how many layers of things. So it may look like you're not on a firewall at this level, but maybe you are behind a firewall at another level and um, or have matting happening somewhere. Uh, in, in any case, um, because that stuff is a little complicated to, to uh, determine and we have the added problem in Holochain of what does online even mean? Like if you're trying to detect if you're online or offline, when you don't have any centralized component, what, what should you be looking for to determine if you're online? So if you can detect other peers, do you think you're online? Well, what if you're just in a, on a LAN in your local area network because you're doing a LAN party gaming on a local app? Are you online even though you're disconnected from the, net, from the internet because there's local peers? So it, it actually, there, there's some additional layers that make it complex to identify the network state that you should be configured for so at this stage, we've just simplified the configuration to default to going through the proxy because that's what we need for testing. And we will deal with the other complexities and UIs for letting you change that and that kind of thing in the future. Awesome, thanks Art. So Mary's back. So um, thanks to the networking stuff, that was fantastic. Uh, so Mary, I wanna uh, talk a little bit about Elemental Chat. Actually, I don't wanna talk about it. I wanna show you guys because um, I've got a dev test going on right here. And uh, so far, so good. So don't know that this will all continue to go without flaws or failures because I have not connect. I literally just connected my port. I haven't even signed in to Elemental Chat or started chatting, but I can see behind. Well, let me just show you. So just to clarify, you are running this on a whole port. This right. is running right. on my holoport. In fact, if you guys hear, ever, I don't know if you can hear it, but my holoport sometimes spin up and you can occasionally hear them. They were just updating a second ago. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> I, lost. I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Um, okay, so uh, this is Elemental Chat. And back here, I know I'm in the right one because my team has been pinging me and letting me know what channels exist. So here we go, Mary live. Maybe you could either control plus to enlarge the font or oh, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. shrink the window. <laughs> that. How's that? Make, is that a little bit better for everybody yeah. online? For watching a video, a probably so. Monitor and I've just got it taken up the whole screen. Um, so yeah, so let's go. I just created my nickname and there we go. And now let's see, I'm in Zippy's, full, no, Zippy's channel now. Hi, Zippy. You're live on the AMA. I type terribly when I'm thinking about it. If he sees it, let me let me make sure he's even aware that I'm there. Uh, I can hear him. He's in a he's in a Holo hosting team meeting online right now. I'm at his house, I so that. I can hear him upstairs. <laughs> Well, you guys saw it land for me, but let's see. Well, let's go see an Alistair's channel. Well, these guys were on a second ago. Yeah, it look, I, I mean, it sounds to me like they're actually going over some tickets from what I'm overhearing from Zippy's voice. So they may not be looking at uh, their- I just saw it, yours. So he's gonna, Zippy's gonna jump into his channel now. Sorry guys, I didn't have all the other, the other people involved in this test ready to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> and then I was waiting for a- Click on test channel two. It looks like you have a new message there. Oh yeah, look at that. So yeah, they added some new functionality. Oops. Yeah, it's hard, hard to see real time speeds if nobody's on the other end typing back to you. Right. 
Uh, you know, let me just run upstairs and and uh, have him jump on. <laughs> hey, Jack just replied to me. Cool. Looks like we have Joel actually is Jack and he's talking to me in Zippy's channel. I think that's the case. Not really positive. Now, Zippy said he was just doing something to his holoport. So we, I don't know if, the, if he's in a, in a state that he can be. Yeah, and I don't even know that, if Alistair so. knew that I was going to do this. So uh, it's possible that he didn't know I was there. I'll just I'll, I'll Guys, text Alistair. Right. <laughs> this is a this is a this is a demo fail. <laughs> Jumping into a chat, right? I, into it, a chat with nobody on the other end is a demo fail. <laughs> Please write. There we go. There's some responses. Where is that? Yeah, uh, I got the Jack. Okay. Classic. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> I can't tell how fast they're going. Ask him to reply with a particular thing so you can see how long it takes to get response back to a particular thing. Uh, Let's say. Yeah, but I don't know if that's about him. I mean, the, the problem that I have with all this, Arthur, is that when we're in a Zoom room and we're testing this, it, we're kind of sharing that we just sent the message, but I don't know if he's even looking at his screen. We could, should, should we see if he can jump onto the Zoom? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't exactly prep the team for doing this. Let's, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just just say please respond with blue in quotes and see if you get back a response quickly. <laughs> I don't know if he's watching his screen either, but at least uh, if you got a quick response. I just don't think they are. <laughs> Yeah, just just to clarify, we weren't we weren't sure exactly where the test was going to go, so we didn't orchestrate a, or come up with a plan to demo. But we just wanted to. Now that it's up and running, we thought we'll just Mary will come back and show you all how it's working. Yeah, this is this test isn't uh, obviously the the sign that we we we're measuring <laughs> something, but um, what what I can say about it, I'm actually going to turn off the the screen share for right now. What, what I can say about it that's really good so far is that we've had four different people uh, just pop on. It just, th this particular dev test just finished building. So this channel just updated. We all had to wait for our holoports to, uh, to run the update. And so I don't, if you have read some of our other things about your holoport, it it's on a path or a pattern where every 10 minutes it does an auto update. So we specifically did this in a channel where it had to do that auto update that we had to wait. Well, for every that. 10 minutes it checks for updates so that Correct. it could do an auto update if there is one. Good catch. Thank you. Um, yes. And this time there was an update. So <laughs> it found it and did it. But the point was, is that we were waiting for it to happen versus pushing the update to happen or going into a brand new channel where we hadn't been running uh, the chat, uh, elemental chat previously. So um, four people have been able to join it so far. Um, we'll be having the team get on and, and really start pounding it with our, our various test protocols uh, over the course of the next rest of today and probably tomorrow. And uh, we'll see where we are, see if we find any big bugs or not. Thank you very much, Mary. I'll jump into a couple of questions on the chat, but just just to clarify for people what they've seen. So that was uh, that was Elemental Chat and hosted just by Holoports. Is that right? Yep, yep. That was running on the Holoport. So we're directly, uh, basically logging in to the Holoport 
to run the app. Okay, very cool. Okay, super. Okay, um, so anything? Oh, so the first question just around uh, the it took a little bit longer. You shared it took a, was taking longer to transfer messages than we had hoped. Uh, and so we're just, someone's just wondering, can it be as fast as a centralized chat app? Right. Well, that was a little while back. That was in one of the updates, um, I don't know, uh, seven days ago or so. And we've iterated through a couple of different dev tests since then. And um, right now, when, when everything else is working um, well, the, we're getting some instantaneous messaging. I don't know if that's what we're seeing here or not because I don't know what's happening on the other end with my testers, um, you know, with my co-testers. But um, but we have we have seen it be instantaneous, um, and you know we've also seen it take a couple of seconds. So it just can vary quite a lot. And one of the things that we also know is that there's differences, you know for how long it may take to have all the channels update and refresh and get all the data that's already in the chat when you first join. So there's things like that that may be different. Art, you had something on that one? Yeah, I just wanna say that there's a couple of different modes that, that the messages could be received and that's why you would see different timelines. So we send a signal out to people who are like in the channel at the moment uh, and those happen very quickly. And that's where you see the sort of the instantaneous update. Um, if otherwise it gets gossiped to you and then you might see it after uh, it, you know, after some seconds. And uh, actually there's two different even modes of that sort of gossip. One's actually publishing versus gossip. Publishing is what we would call the fast push versus the slow heel. So if you are for some reason not both connected at the moment to the proxy server in the moment that the fast push happens, then you have to kind of wait for the slow heel to come around and get the data gossiped to you from your neighbors as opposed to having received it from the person publishing it. And so because there's three different modes you might receive the message through, um, it, that's why you see some different timing depending on were you actually in the channel that they were on when they typed it versus did, were you online and connected when they published it versus is it getting gossiped after the fact? So there's, those, those happen at three different speeds. Um, so if you're actually both on a channel typing to each other very fast, um, if you've been offline and you come back online and there's a bunch of gossip to catch up on, then it's a little bit slower. Cool, awesome. That's great clarification. Thanks, Art. Um, and I think what we've seen is it's quite a bit faster already than it was when that update came out, which is... Fantastic. So, okay. Um, will it be the only app? One, oh, ah, go one for more it. Funny, one, one more funny thing about that. The people testing didn't necessarily know some of the default configurations that were set up in Holochain at that time, where, for example, it was always failing over to the network, even if it got the data locally, which is, that's sort of our fault. We probably shouldn't have had that happening. But we also had the default and the failing over to the network wait to get a response from two people on the network. And people were testing it with only a total of two peers, which means if I'm waiting for an answer for two other people on the network and there's only one other person on the network, then I have to wait for my request to completely time out, which was a two second timeout. So every time I talked to the network, we were waiting the full two seconds to try to talk to two peers, but there was only one other peer out there. And so the people didn't even realize that they were testing it in a mode where they were getting the absolute worst performance possible because they hadn't even put enough peers on the network. Um, and so there are just some, some, some weird things behind the, the news that, that things were a little slower than expected because they actually weren't configured right for speed. Yeah, cool, okay. Um, so will Elemental Chat be the only app that'll be accessible through web browsers between open alpha um, and beta or will there be other apps? Um, well, the whole Holo network is actually built on Holochain apps. So those are obviously going to be part of what's available. Um, but no, I think we're going to be opening up and allowing other community uh, developers to publish some of their apps as part of the, the open alpha testing. I mean, it'll be critical for us to have more than just one or two apps in there to really test the functionality of the network, test the functionality of, of the, the UIs, the, the front ends of the host console and the publisher portal. I mean, so we'll be hoping to see lots of different applications, um, some simple, some complex. We, we don't, there's gonna be 
probably some processes that we're still learning because um, publishers, for example, developers, for example, will need to go learn how to prepare their, their applications for hosting. Uh, there's gonna be some requirements for what, how they need to be set up to do that. Uh, there's also things that eventually we're gonna have to figure out too as a community, which is how do we test? How do, how do we rate? How do we understand? How do we do reviews of each other's apps? Uh, so that they are eligible to be hosted on uh, the whole platform and also to be available in the app store. So those are some things that still are going to be being worked out and we're going to need to be working with real applications to do that. So absolutely, we, we uh, expect to see lots of different apps on the Polo network during alpha. Cool. I, I think we're at the top of the hour. Unless there's a, any other questions any of you guys are dying to answer, I think that's pretty, that covers us for today. Art, anything else out there that you want people to know? No, cool. Mary, thank uh, was, you. Oh, sorry, I was going to add one thing to what Mary was saying is that part of the thing is that at this stage, you do have to come through us to get a, an app onto the hosting framework. And, and it's going to be a little while before we have more like the self-service app store and that kind of thing where, through which you can post apps. So at the moment, yes, we actually would, would welcome other apps to be hosted, but you are going to have to coordinate that with, with us at this stage. Okay, super. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Art. Thanks for the networking answers and everything else. And thanks, Mary, for the answers and jumping out and um, giving, giving us the, the, <laughs> the live <laughs> update and the bit of the demo. Uh, yep. Okay, and we we'll look forward to... So, yeah, we'll be in touch with the results and and the infrastructure run release as the as the as as that unfolds. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, just in closing, uh, yeah, thanks to Artem, Mary, and thanks to the whole team for just keeping on pushing and building and getting to where we are. It's been a it's been a huge year, and I think everyone's worked amazingly hard and incredibly productively. Thanks to everyone who's watching today and asking questions, the team behind who have been supporting and for everyone who's involved in, in whatever way, we're, we're looking forward to um, yeah, getting these releases out there and, and building some more really, really cool stuff together. And on that note, that's the close of AMA number 44. See you, see you for the next one.